So you've decided to put your retirement funds into a self-managed super fund. That's great. Now, what else do you need to do to manage your super fund successfully? First, let's look at SMSF eligibility. For a fund to be an SMSF, it must meet several requirements under superannuation law. It must have six or fewer members. This was changed from four members on the 1st of July 21. Each member must be a trustee or a director of a trustee company, and each trustee or director of the trustee company must be a member. No member can be an employee of another member unless they're related, and no trustee or director of a trustee company can be paid for their duties or services as trustee of the fund. As an SMSF trustee, you are ultimately responsible for running your own self-managed super fund and you must understand your duties, responsibilities and obligations. First of all, there's the trust deed. A self-managed super fund must have a trust deed and that's a legal document that outlines how the fund will be set up and how it will operate, in effect, the rules of the fund. The trust deed and the CIS legislation guide all decisions made by the trustee in relation to the trust. This document establishes a trust relationship between the trustee settler and the beneficiaries, and in this case, the self-managed super fund members. All self-managed super funds need to lodge an SMSF annual return to the Australian Tax Office, which will report income tax, super regulatory information, member contributions, and also pay the supervisory levy. Your self-managed super fund is required to have its financial statements audited by an SMSF auditor on an annual basis. As a trustee, you're required to appoint an auditor to audit your fund each year at least 31 days before the due date of the SMSF annual return. Your auditor must form an opinion as to whether both of the following apply. First of all, that your financial statements are a fair representation of the financial position of the fund. And secondly, that your fund has complied with all of the relevant superannuation legislation. Now that you've created your fund, it's important that you ensure your fund's compliance by meeting the sole purpose test. The sole purpose test means that your self-managed super fund is run with the sole purpose of providing benefits to members upon their retirement or to dependents if a member passes away. Contravening the sole purpose test is very serious and may lead to trustees facing legal action. You or another member can't receive any benefit from the fund before your retirement. For a lot of people, the main drawcard of an SMSF is the greater control that you may have over your investments. The CIS regulations state that the trustee of the entity must formulate, review regularly and give effect to an investment strategy that has regard to the whole of the circumstances of the super fund. The investment strategy is an important document for your fund and provides a big picture guidance on how you will operate your self-managed super fund. The ATO has a trustee declaration that all self-managed super fund trustees must sign to acknowledge that they understand their duties and responsibilities as a trustee of an SMSF. Much of our content is designed to assist you in understanding your responsibilities.